What is up, everybody? It's your boy Nugs B, and I just want to give a shout out to all of the sponsors of hashtag TogetherFTR. The first sponsor I want to give a big shout out to today is Advanaclean of the Tri State, ran by Joel and Pam Dooley. Advanaclean of the Tri State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. Things like mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. Give them a call for a free estimate today at 606-331-5001. And that's 606-331-5001. Go ahead, if you're on Facebook, head over to their Facebook page at Clean of the Tri-State. Give them a like. Be sure to share their page, send them a message, and say Taylor sent you. And if you need to go to their commercial location, you can find them at 4446 13th Street, Ashland, Kentucky. And the second sponsor today is a great friend of mine. He is seriously, hands down, top two sculptors I know personally. And his name is Wyatt Freeman, W-Y-A-T-T. F-R-E-E-M-A-N. Look him up on Facebook. He's a sculptor, painter. He can draw. And just a great person all around. You can find him on Facebook, as I said. He is somebody I am recommending today that you need to get with as soon as possible to get some commissioned art. He charges a very reasonable fee and can do pretty much anything you need and will work with you very attentively. Shout out to you, Wyatt. Keep it weird, friends. Let's go ahead and get this episode started. Uh, uh, it's for the record, son. Yeah. 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 It's for the. It's for the record. I say it's for the. It's for the record. Yeah, boy, it's for the. It's for the record. And we all are. We all too. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B, coming to you with episode 36, for the record, hashtag TogetherFTR, and I am joined by the magical Wyatt Freeman. How are you doing today, sir? Uh, Beautiful. Killing it. That's what I love to hear. That's what I love to hear. Um, As you can see, we have our man Thoth here, and he's just chilling, you know, doing what gods do, Mm -hmm. you know, just doing what he does. Um... So I'm going to start this off by letting you all know that Wyatt is a good friend of mine who is probably, like I told him earlier, there's two people out here who are the best sculptors that I know. Literally, he happens to be one of them. So I just want to let you guys know that from the very jump. And, uh, you know, here in a minute we're going to show uh, some work that he brought tonight as well. So you guys can check that out. Uh, and then we're going to let you know how to find him you know, on Facebook and all that stuff as well. Uh, super dope artist. Love this guy to death, man. Gracias. Um, so we're going to start today, as usual, with the entertainment history, and I got some really cool ones today, man. I, uh, I was ciphering through, and I saw one, because, here's the thing, bro, everybody knows, we were just talking about the grunge era, and Mm -hmm. here's the thing, everybody knows the biggest things to come out of that was Pearl Jam and Nirvana. Would you say that's pretty accurate? Absolutely. I feel like that's pretty accurate. I feel like those are the top two, uh, let's say... Popularity wise, I won't say talent or favorite or best, but let's say popularity. I'd probably say Pearl Jam and Nirvana are the most known. The Alice and Change you mentioned that earlier. For sure, yeah, 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 for sure. They're my favorite personally, but I was talking, you know, just more on a grand scale, like a because I, I mean, my opinion is just one, you know, like I yeah, don't feel yeah. like, you know, I feel like mine don't really matter, you know. I feel <laughs> like I'm looking at like a a big, you know, grander scale, and I feel like. That was probably the two most popular ones. And today, September 2nd, 1993, Pearl Jam's Jeremy Video wins four awards, including Video of the Year at the MTV Video Music Awards. 
Uh, Pearl Jam responds by not making any more videos until 1998. Ooh. How punk rock of them was that? Yeah, then. You know, you, you like our stuff? We're not making nothing. We're done. When was that? 91? Uh, it was in 1993 when Jeremy won. They didn't make another one till 98. Wow, is there a reason for that? I, they're punk rock, bro. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't even forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, bro. But uh, that's just my guess because they're hardcore like that. Yeah. You already know. Eddie Vedder's, Eddie Vedder's out here, son. Uh, I'm actually going to have to look that up now. I didn't even think. Right, I just see exactly <laughs> I didn't what? even think about the details of why they didn't. That's Were really they weird. making their next record? Or yeah, what? like uh, touring, I guess, yeah. a lot. I mean, you could still do a video of touring, though. Like, you could do... You know, like like Rage Against the Machine. You know, like a couple of their videos were just like, oh. dude. You know, you know, just rapping and the band playing and whatever. So like, those were cool too. Dude, somehow that was a band that I forgot about for the longest time I until love them. I don't know, a couple months ago. Just yeah. heard one of their songs. It just I got totally them. head over heels. I listen to them bro. every day, dude. I love them, bro. Uh, brings me back so totally, good. totally. So good, man. And for those of you out there who are you know maybe younger than me or even people who are older than me. Uh, if you haven't heard of Rage Against the Machine, you just need to go listen to that just, immediately. If that's anything I can tell you today, just go listen to them because they were really dope. No, oh, Really dope. Um, so the next thing I got today is September 2nd, 1995, Michael Jackson's You Are Not Alone becomes the first song to debut at number one uh, on the Hot 100. In the video, Jackson and his wife, Lisa Marie Presley, appear topless. So you get a little, you know, a little chest action from your girl. So that's cool. Uh, and then also, September 2nd, 1976, uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five become the first rap act to play a theater when they do their first major gig performing in Harlem. Hmm. I thought that was really cool. I'm still stuck on the, uh, they were topless? Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't remember that video exactly, but both I'm of them like total I'm gonna pull the picture up for yeah. you bro yes that's hilarious yeah bro uh, when I saw that I thought it was pretty cool too R.I.P. man I love Michael Jackson I know yeah. those horrific things came out or whatever but yeah. you know I don't know I feel like those guys were just trying to get some money and I've already spoke about it on the podcast before, but I'm going to speak on it again. I'm not even going to watch that documentary, bro. Like, that's so messed up. This guy's already dead. Dude, dude I heard. What is wrong with you, bro? It, like, uh, why would you do that to a human after they're dead? I can't remember. It was it Chappelle that was talking about it recently? The, the new saying how Netflix special? Saying how grody it is? Uh, it's horrible, man. Yeah, I'm not watching either. Uh, yeah, I'm good, dude. Need not for me. And I've already said it before, like I said, like I, I, it was probably five episodes ago, bro. Like it was a minute ago, but I, it, when it came out, whenever it came out, you can go back and look. Whatever episode was close to that, I said it. And I was like, I'm not watching that. I'm not giving into that. I'm not promoting that. Nothing, dude. I don't want any part of it. I'm good. Hmm. Here's the picture right here. I mean, you can't really see like you know the the dirty, dirty, uh, you know, uh, you know, inappropriate uh, picture. But it's yeah, you know, I don't know why you can see I, his nipple. But I you must know. have blocked this out because I, I don't remember that at all. That's weird. All right. That's when he had the short hair too. Right. We're talking Sean Hunter middle part. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We're talking Boy Meets World out here. The palest of pales. Though. And that was his wife. Yeah, I Lisa Marie Presley. That's like allegedly his children's. Uh, mom, I'm pretty sure. Like, I mean, I'll fact check it right now, but I'm pretty sure Lisa Marie Presley is their mom. Or I don't know. I mean, South Park said that they were made in a lab. His kids were. So I don't really know. It, you know, everybody. How true uh, that is. Everybody knows the one he, like held over the rail or whatever blanket, blanket or whatever. Yeah. That's uh, her kid too. Yeah. I, I I think mm. I don't know. I'm about to fact check it right now. Uh, uh, I don't know. It could have. It could have just been somebody else that he kept. Like, oh no, Debbie. No. Uh, that don't look. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I wish they could see the picture that came up, <laughs> dude. If Tell you, me that's not. <laughs> oh uh, my god. No, like, look. If you all are watching this, I'm crying, bro. Look, you have to go on Google and type in Michael Jackson kids. Uh, who who is their mom? It literally pops up, Debbie Rowe. I don't know who this is, but there is no way this is it might be, bro. <laughs> if it is, this story gets weirder. Dude, than I, I don't thought. even want to get into this story. This is creeping me out already, yeah. bro. What's the next? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going on to the next, bro. We're talking about Grandmaster Flash and the okay. Furious yeah. Five. Do you actually know um, the first time that rap, like, I think it was the first time that anybody rapped or anything like that, like poetry had been done? It was in New York. It was in the seventies, maybe or late 60s possibly uh but they actually stole uh public electricity 
And it, it was during the Civil Rights Act movement, actually, bro. It was during that, actually. Um, so they stole public electricity, and uh, they just started, like, rapping, talking about how they felt because they didn't want to do – they didn't want to, you know, commit crimes and, you know, cause more violence and more looting and, you know, bad stuff that was going on at that time. And uh, they just talked about how they felt about it, and they, like, you know, just put it out there like that. And that was the first – I don't know who it was or, you know, whatever, but that was the first time, like, rapping – first time we know about rapping. Mm, really? You know, in New York, yeah. I don't know exactly what year it is, but, uh, yeah, that's that's legit, though. Yeah. Take it. Um, the last thing today for entertainment history, my friends, is September 2nd, 1993. Stone Temple Pilots win Best New Artist at the MTV Video Music Awards for Plush. Mm. Makes sense. I mean, Dude, I love that song. They're, I mean, they're, they're pretty sick. They are. And also got some facts of the day too, man, which are really cool because I actually just got these added to my arm. Like I got the symbols of, from cards on my arm from my grandma because uh, she was just a card playing fool, and that's what <laughs> she did, bro. And we always played cards every time we went down there, and like she would just make us, bro. <laughs> like you have to learn how to play cards if you come down to my mamma's house. Uh, you know, God rest her soul. You know, uh, but you know, I got you know the card. Emblem, you know, emblems or whatever, you know, symbols put on me. And uh, the four kings in a deck of playing cards are based on real rulers. For example, the king of diamonds represents the wealthy Julius Caesar. The king of clubs is the brutal Alexander the Great. The king of spades represents the strong but kind David of Israel. And the king of hearts represents the emotionally disturbed Charles the Seventh of France. Hmm. I thought that was super cool. I had no idea. Me either. I was like, that, and it literally went with, like, I just got this tat not even that long ago. Like, literally, it's been under a week. (laughs) So, yeah, super pumped about that. When I read that, I was like, dude, that's got to go in episode 36. (laughs) Like, that's, that's, that's destiny, my friend. Like, this is what it is. Um, next thing I got for you guys today is why, you know, have you ever know, like, have you ever thought about why it's called, uh, a manila envelope? You ever thought about that? Because I have, and I'm, I'm, I was curious. So I was like, you know what, bro? I wonder why it's called Manila. What's what's Manila? Some what is the that? Color? What it? Uh, well, here's what it says. The Manila hemp is uh, derived from a species of banana originally from the Philippines whose fibers are tough. The hemp is then used during the papermaking process, similar to how craft paper uses wood pulp. So the mystery is solved. The Manila envelope gets its name from the hemp in which it is made from. Wow. I thought it was the color. Yeah. I thought it was the color, bro. Dude, there's a guy named Jordan Maxwell that gets deep into where different sayings and words like that come from. That's sick. Like his, the origins of words? Yeah. Dude, that's really interesting. What's his name? Jordan uh, Maxwell? Jordan Maxwell. Definitely Write that down, dude. dude. We're, we're going to have to put that down on this episode for dude, sure. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm going to get that down, dude. Intense stuff. Just like what you're reading, though. It's yeah. like the origin of weird that's words awesome, and stuff, dude. right? That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I got some other segments I'm going to be introducing in the next couple episodes as well that are kind of similar to that. I got a couple of different new things I'm going to test. I'm pretty psyched, man. I really am. Um, and the last fact of the day is the green iguana has a third eye in the middle of its forehead. This does not function in the same way as its two side eyes, but enables it to detect movement, especially from above, to help it avoid predators. Oh, I like this How one. How sick is that, dude? So Reptiles are awesome. So we know that we have a third eye, right? We know yeah. it's got a retina and all that yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. but they've got a different one. It's is different. It? It's like really? I don't, I really don't even know. Like I'm, I, you know, I want to do more research on. it. I kind of just found it and was like, that's really, really cool. Like, you know, I was just searching the web and found some cool stuff. But I don't know too much about it, but what I wrote down about it is that's the summary I got. You know, I just kind of like pieced what I've read together real quick right. and put it together. Dude, you know, we got to study cool. into that and figure Dude, out if that's it's sick. Yeah, you know, if well, it's like consciousness legit or is it just like strictly for defense purposes of evolution, you know, or like adaptation to its environment maybe because it is technically prey. You know what? I've I've looked a lot into the third eye stuff with, with people, but I've never really thought about animals having them. You know yeah, I mean? dude, me either. I've never thought of that ever. I wonder if like a squirrel has a Bro, third eye. <laughs> my third eye open out here. I'm getting to it in the tree, son. We're doing it, baby. I've got a, a squirrel, th- bro. That's a good. Yeah. Put that <laughs> down really to Google. Do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, this is going. This is happening right now. Does a squirrel have a third eye? There I feel are. like like it kind of goes into that thing, like you know, where they think there's reptilian people and stuff. Maybe it's just like a reptile thing because maybe, you know, certain people did evolve from lizards, not like Homo sapiens, but like maybe there were at one time throughout history a type of reptilian creature, humanoid, you know, whatever, you know, adaptation of whatever it may be. 
but it could be from that, bro. And dude, like, you we, know, we could go deep into that, too, dude. Deep, deep, deep. deep. But, you know, I really think that could play into it. Maybe it's not mammals and stuff. Maybe it's more on, like, a reptilian-like level. Well, they say about know? our brain that we have a lot of a reptilian... That's where it comes from, too. Yeah, right. it's like... So maybe it's, like, correlates with that to a little mm. bit of a degree or something weird. But I'm looking up uh, the Dude, squirrel. One of the weirdest things... Have you looked at the... Like, it's not the Pope, but it's the building in Rome, I think, that is shaped like a the snake back. head. Oh, no. And then it's got the eyes on the side, oh, just no, like a snake. Oh, that. dude, you got to go. Yeah, it's crazy. I'll look that up. Yeah, like that makes you think. Like, why would that be a religion? I don't know. It, that's a I big rabbit hole. Yeah, nothing with squirrel. One-eyed squirrel, but we don't have three-eyed squirrel. No. Um, would mm. you say building infrastructure in Rome, dude? In dude, I think it's in Rome. Just look up snake building pope something, pope. Okay. dude. That stuff gets. Super weird, and I'm sorry to everybody who can't see this. this is kind of there. Just it is. For us to see. All right, see the one, one? with the lights and the eyes on either side. That's the building oh, from dude. the inside. That's you should sick. look at the outside of. It. See, go up one. It looks crazy, bro. Dude, it's uh, it's in the which, shape which, which of a snake's head. Hold on. One up, uh, right there. This is what it looks like from the outside. You see how wow, it? Uh, yeah, it's like it's built like kind of like a basilisk. Somebody made is that. A basilisk a snake, right? Is what a basilisk? Or is it like I, a Bastina or something? I don't. I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about? Like from uh, Harry Potter. I never Basilisk. watched. Never watch Harry Potter. Oh man. my god! Blasphemy! My fans, <laughs> bro, they're about to be so upset with you. I'm gonna get into. Oh it, I swear my to god! Because yeah. I literally just had a poll the other day about Harry Potter or Star Wars. Oh yeah, tough mm. tough times for people to choose oh, things, dude, man. Totally <laughs> Star Wars, but only because I've not seen Harry Potter. Fair enough, bro. Yeah. I don't. I, <laughs> I, I couldn't even pick. I just kind of put it out there for other people to pick because you know I'm just I'm a bad guy like that. You know? But dude, how weird is that? Like the that Pope goes and intense. stands in between. You should see the sculpture they got in the background too. This is like a little so, like br- blueprint line art of it. That's yeah, crazy looking. It's just really weird. Check that out if you get a minute. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that you know, thing. You see that called. thing? That's, you see that yeah, thing? That's real weird. Dude, uh, it's called. It's a Vatican building that looks like a snake. Yeah, it's in the yeah. Vatican, bro. Why? It is in the Vatican. Why would they do that? I mean, you know. Hmm. Hell, the snake, son. They've watched too much Harry Potter. Mm. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, realistically, though, it's uh, it's just like look up uh, Pope Vatican uh, building snake. And it'll show you the overtop view, a couple different pictures on Google, and it'll also show you the inside of it. And it definitely looks like a snake, my dude. Weird. Way on point. Weird. Um, but what I was saying about the, that I can't show it or whatever, and we can only see it, is because uh, I don't really have – the software right now that I need to flip back and forth. I could do it before, but it was with my webcam. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of a little peace of mind of like why I'm not showing pictures anymore like I used to. Uh, it's just kind of difficult, and I just don't really have the money right now. Uh, that's Dude. why I'm trying to get these sponsors, baby. People need to come through for the sponsorship, <laughs> and then boom, you know, I can you know I can use that to fund the different things that I can get. Uh, so anybody interested in the sponsorship opportunity, just hit me up. Uh, while I'm at it, also go check out www.togetherftr.com and buy some merch. We got some cheap shirts on there. Uh, we got socks. We got flip flops. We got fanny packs, bro. You know, we kicking it old school. Probably gonna get a mullet soon. I Dude, mean, you got you fanny know. packs on fanny it? packs, what? bro. Nice. Yeah. Uh, back to what we were saying, though. I got a little off topic there. Sorry about that, my friend. Uh, but the green iguana, man, third eye. Like, is this not probably the coolest thing that? I, this is probably the coolest thing I've learned all week. Yeah. And I learn. I try to learn every single day. I make a point. Like, I, my dude Lambo, the one, I, you know, my ninth grade history teacher I was telling you about, I call yeah. him so often, bro, just to, like, like aggravate him about stuff. Like, you know, but, hey, man, uh, what is this? You know, like, he explained electoral college to me. He's broken down so many things about, like, politics and, like, immigration things, foreign policies. Like, I just, he's a wealth of knowledge, man, you know. Like, shout out to him for sure. And, you know, I just call him randomly, bro. Like, uh, he's probably just going to block my number eventually and be like, nah, I'm done with this kid. I can't, I can't mess with this guy no more. everything I know, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm tired of you just picking my brain, man. Uh, but I do, man. I'll call him randomly. But I'll be like, hey, what's up, you know, uh, whatever this random stuff, you know. Uh, and also, speaking of Electoral College, while I'm at it as well, make sure to be paying attention to what's going on right now in your lives, people. If you are 18 and older, you need to go vote in the primaries. You need to go vote. Because I was under the impression that voting does not matter, but that is not the truth. And if you don't know the truth, go watch the episode with me and Lambert 
Uh, it breaks down the whole electoral college and how things work, and it's trickery that media is trying to do to us so we don't vote. So the people who are only 40 and up are just going to keep voting, and all these old people are going to keep you – know, and I don't mean old people in a bad way. Let me rephrase that because i got a lot of older people that I'm really cool with. I'm going to say most older generation people are voting for the wrong people because of trickery and people are getting hoodwinked. That's the best words I can use for what is happening in our country right now. Hmm. Because if we all voted, we, we, we can't be denied what we know that everybody voted. There's too many cameras. There's too many people talking on social media. We're too intertwined with our brains. and you know Everything's intertwined now, dude. And like, I just personally feel like I can't believe I was duped. Like mm. I was so like distraught by it, man. Like I, it makes me so mad because for so long I was like, "Yeah, dude, your votes don't matter. You know, it don't matter because of Al Gore and you know, blah blah blah, and you know all the popular vote." And then I got shut down, and I got humbled, and I got checked in life, and I was yeah, now I realize it's not the truth. And if we all do it, and people in my generation, your generation, and in between and further and backwards and whatever, if we all do it, we can't be denied our freedom and what we deserve. I gave you that. Straight up. But next thing I got, man, we're going to go ahead and get straight into some topics here. And uh, first things first, what's a game that you have spent over 100 hours on? Oh, dude, I could easily say like GTA 5, Bro, Def, but, yes. but the one I probably spent the most division, most the time. first one. Dude, I never played Division. Ever? God. Never, bro. So cool, dude. It's all, it always pops up on the Xbox store and the PlayStation store. Cause I, got, I ended up getting me an Xbox One just because a lot of my homies play Xbox and stuff. And, uh, you know, shout out to all my homies I play Smite with. I know I ain't been on, but, you know, I've been busy, dude, for real. Do you have an Xbox? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you got Xbox One? Oh, you, have, you have internet, bro? Like, yeah. do you have, like, Xbox do Live? I have internet? I, well, you know what I mean. Like, do you have the Xbox Live? I mean, oh, yeah. Gold. yeah. Yeah, we'll have Dude, to share. You uh, got, yeah, yeah, I got your gamer tag, bro, because you got to yeah. get on Smite. It's a free game. I got it. Oh, I just, I've bro, never played it. Yes, I, my so buddy good. had me download it. I never played oh, it once. Dude, I got some I uh, I got some people that I run with. They're pretty hey, don't good, Don't they got man. Thoth on there? Yeah, Thoth is on there. Ah, is that how you yeah. say his name, Thoth? That's what I is say. Is it Thoth or Thoth? I think it's subjective. It, fair enough, dude. Yeah, <laughs> valid point. That's very true. Yeah. I always thought it was Thoth, though. Like, I don't know. It sounds weird. cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I, feel like, I feel like Thoth is what Graham Hancock says, but he's got that British accent, bro, so I don't know what words to trust from him. I, yeah. gotta, like, I don't know what's going on, man. He's very well spoken. I'm not saying, like, I, I don't trust his wording. It's just, like, he says things differently, you know what I mean? So when you listen to him, you kind of you got to take that into consideration, you know. Shout out to Graham Hancock. If you guys don't know who that guy oh, is, you're, just, you're missing out. Yeah, you're missing killer. Out. So, yeah, like I said, man, uh, Division for you, I'm going to go ahead and throw out probably, like, five games because I don't, you know. I have a problem. <laughs> I've, I used to play video games got? a lot. Uh, Smite, I've probably spent I don't an embarrassing amount of time on. Uh, Tony Hawk's Underground 2, Tony Hawk's oh, Proving yeah. Ground, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3, uh, Halo 2, Halo Reach. Uh, uh, man, what other ones? I, it. Uh, what else did I play a lot? Budokai 2, Budokai 1, Dragon Ball Z. That was for PlayStation 2. Uh, Guitar Hero 3, 2... Rock Band 1 and 2 and Rock Band Beatles. Dude, I used to play Rock Band and Guitar Hero constantly, man. Like, my whole adolescence was video games, computers, Dude. very uh, tech-savvy electronics. You know Gears of I mean? War? Like, Never played Gears? I, I have Gears of War 2 and 3 actually Dude. sitting right there, bro. Oh, yeah. I, beat, I, yeah, I, I beat... Uh, I have three right there. Ninja have, Gaiden? Oh, yeah, bro. Ninja Gaiden's sick. Yeah. I didn't play it too much. I kind of just beat it and, like, really? you know, put it ask down. Ask Nerd about that, dude. Oh, is that his game? Oh, is that his dude. game? Yeah. Dude, Ninja, I think we talked about it when he came over, actually. He was like, dude, you got Ninja Gaiden? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we did talk about it, actually. But dude, Gears 5 is about to drop. Yeah, I know. I saw it on the Xbox. Uh, store. Totally good. I saw it. it. Yeah. yeah. Next it week. It looks good. Got that. Uh, I have two for PlayStation 3, actually, but I beat three on 360. You did know? you play four? Uh, no, I didn't play four. Was it four? It was It was good. Actually, it was different, dude. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, you're uh, good. But, uh, you know, I uh, I played four, but only online. I never played the campaign. Ah, like, I never yeah. played the story mode. That's the only thing I played. Well, I played a little multi, but... Yeah, multi's pretty dope. It was Marx's son, so that was okay. kind of neat, but That's it cool. wasn't the same. Yeah. And here's the part I hated. They put robots in it, and robots was totally yeah. different. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. We want some alien life. We don't want, we don't want so, robots. I'm hoping five you know? will be redemption. Mm-hmm. 
<coughs> good call, my friend. <coughs> yeah. She yeah. um, got chucked up on my water. Uh, what's another good one that's been out <coughs> recently? Uh, um, new uh, Spider-Man. Did you play it? I didn't. My buddy uh, Oh, it only came out for it. PS4, bro. I don't even know if they have it on Xbox One yet. I think yeah, where it's a Sony, it. like, uh, you know, uh, Spider-Man Sony. <coughs> that got me. Um, I think where it's Sony, bro, I don't know if it even came out on Xbox now that I think of it. But it was sick, dude. Do you know that on real good. on Gears Five you can mm-hmm. now like uh, what do they call that when they're intertwined computers with Xbox? We can uh, uh, cross cross platform. Yeah, 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 yeah you, you yeah. can do cross that on Gears Five. Dude, Isn't that one of the sick. first ones? No, Fortnite was the first one. I Fortnite think. One? I think yeah. that was the first one. Well, I mean, like, we talked about that as well. You know, uh, I can't remember who I talked to it about. Uh, but we, we talked about it on here, bro, and we were like, you know, PC been doing it probably forever. You know, they're way cooler. They think they're like, you know, the right. bomb or whatever. They do have so a bit like, of an advantage as far oh, as the, like, aim swing. Well, you know what I mean? Well, you got hotkeys, too. So, like, what I would yeah. have to do with two two different buttons on a console, you can hit one key and boom, you can blast me. But and that's, cool. Yeah, yeah. That we can do that with them now. Yeah. And, like, PlayStation 4 with Xbox. Yeah, and, with and Fortnite, dude. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know any other games that do it yet. Mm. I can't think of any. It's coming. It is, bro. And, mm-hmm. like, I can't wait because I can't wait till they do Smite, bro. Because Smite right now, you can play with PC players, but you can't do PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. Which it sucks. But, you know, it's not, I guess it's not popular enough, but it's pretty much like League of Legends, bro. But just better graphics. Yeah. Like, and it's better, in my opinion. Like, you know, sorry to all the people that, you know, never got into know, that. Really obsessed over League of Legends. I've got like, a buddy at, right. that I used to work with that was so, like, into that. But, yeah. Then I uh, heard about really Smite. Jam, saw some... dude. Smite is legit. Yeah, gonna have to get in that. Dude, you have like straight up is like I'm giving you. I'm gonna add you while you're here, and we will. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll show you the ropes, man. I'm not. Like, I'm not like the best or whatever, but the guys I run with, man, they're really dope. Like I said, for real. You know, shout out to all of them. Um, yeah, I'm in a clan and everything, bro. Like it's it's legit, dude. Like it's really gonna ask you. yeah, yeah. You can like you can build your own clan and stuff, and like you know it, it's really cool. I, I can't remember the word for it, um, so I'm not even gonna try to butcher it at all. But there's a word for it that's like it's an MMO, but it's an MMO that you start fresh every single time. Hmm. You start with nothing. Like your build, you have to build to get better, hmm. and like everybody starts at zero, and you go to le- and you level up to twenty. By getting kills, you have to kill minions, you can do buff camps, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. It's actually super intricate, bro. And, like, it's got every god you can think of. Really? Literally every god. Like, they added Celtic gods, they added, bro, a stupid amount, seriously. Well, that makes it cool in my book, dude. Super fun. Yeah. And the graphics are pretty dope. Like, they're actually pretty impressive, to be honest, man, and, like... I literally shout out to my dude Brian Compton by the way if you're watching this shout out to you bro because me and him that was the uh, he was uh, my GM at Ruby's like the uh, you know when I first came there and stuff he he got me you know he hired me bro that's my dude uh, known him for years man uh, literally four going on five years now and uh, we literally man it was probably like no exaggeration an embarrassing amount of how much we played that game <laughs> like dude we would. We would literally, like, he'd be closing or something. You know, managers, they don't get off till late. So, like, I would already be two hours in because I got off forever ago, and I'd be, like, hanging out, you know, maybe having a couple beers or something or whatever, hanging out in my apartment when I was living uh, over at Bruce, you know, and uh, I would just be waiting for him to get off, and he'd get off, bro, and he'd, like, you know, just chill and hop on, and we'd start, bro, and we'd play till, like, literally 5 in the morning, bro, like 6 in the morning just – nerding out man nice me him a couple other people a couple few people we did but he, he and i we really played a lot bro. gm at ruby's when was that uh he was a gm at ruby's uh when did i start i started in like 2015 oh, wow. so it's been four years i started in july of 2015 um yeah so yeah he had been there before i was there but yeah, that's where I met him at. Uh, he hired me in, actually, like I said, and uh, you know, got me, to, you know, hired me in, dude. I worked there uh, like uh, twenty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah, that's funny, bro. All right, so next question I got for you, my dude, is uh, would you, if you had to, bro? I'm talking like we're putting a million on it, bro. Like, I'm gonna give you a million dollars if you do this, or I'm gonna give you. Whatever your number is, because everybody has a number of money they would do stuff for. So whatever your number is, I'm going to give you this amount of money to either fight a bear or a panther. Mm. 
in a cage, <laughs> in like an arena. I mean, do I get like a, a chainmail suit? Do you, I? No. Is it just bare flesh, you're, hand to hand? You're gonna get some armor, but it's gonna be pretty light. Are we talking like you're uh, not getting a lot of armor. Middle gonna, ages stuff. We're talking middle age. We're talking like you know Renaissance era light armor, and we're talking you get a sword, but not a good sword. I, you're not getting a I, great I, sword. You're getting like a. You're getting like a just a standard issue, you know, maybe little three, four foot sword. I'm gonna go bear it just because you got oh, a cat. Man. You got a cat? No, I don't have a cat. You know how I quick hate they are cats. when you grab them in the stomach and they just get wrap you. around you. They'll get you in the back. The back I think, paws. I think better chances with bear. You think so? I, Bear's got the yeah. weight. Bear's definitely Jeff, got the weight. But and you the got power. a sword. You, they fall you back do, on you. That's true. That's, that's your true. only hope. But if you got that little sword, you better really mean it, bro. Mm-hmm. You better really. Well, mean I'm not it. swinging it. I'm just waiting for him well, to leap at me and do and the. Stab uh, at the gr- uh, what is it? <laughs> never ending edge. story. Remember yeah, well, the never ending story. Yeah, very end of that. Yeah, in the yeah, edge thing. too. You know, <laughs> with uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Um, what about you? Uh, man, honestly. I want to say I want to take the Panther just because I feel like it's in. Uh, it's not an even playing ground at all. <laughs> it's really not. This is a very tough question, but um, I feel like I would take the Panther simply because it's more to my level. It's like it's like shorter. Mm. It's like shorter. You get what I mean? A bear is much bigger. Yeah. It's like yeah, you, you're. Your like theory of Valid letting point. it fall on you is the only way you could win. <laughs> like that's the only way. Yeah. That's the only way you could win. So like that's the only option with that. With the panther, when it as long as it doesn't get your throat, as long as you can keep your neck like protected and it can't get the back of your neck, and it doesn't hit like your femur or like it doesn't hit anything crucial because they know to go for the throat. That they know that's where it hurts. Like they they know what's up. So if you can protect it while and get around it, I feel like you would have a better chance. You so know? you feel a little like, little more inferior because you're just a little bit higher, and that gives you yes, a little bit of a it, mind over. It's like a it's like a, a vulnerable point. state. I like that. I feel like it puts you it because you know as well as I do, man. In war and in battle, your mind is the most powerful thing. That's a good point. People who anyway it is yeah people who ref, uh, you know, not you know people who depend on just physical and battle and war will never win they'll never truly be warriors so like your mind is a very powerful thing so when you're using your mind bro i'm logically gonna want to fight a panther even though i'm probably gonna die either way like i'm just taking the lesser of two evils i think bro and then also i'm looking at it as like a panther probably kill me quicker too so if i do lose i'm gonna die faster Mm -hmm. because a bear it toys with you it mauls you so if it doesn't break your neck on that big impact or it doesn't really like hit your neck or like it's just gonna play with you for a while and then you might have a chance of i don't know i don't know man i feel like a, a cat's gonna kill you faster I, yeah. A big cat. I feel like it's just going. It's, you're done. You're smoked, bro. Like it's getting you. I'm still going bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another thing we got to take into consideration. What type of bear are we fighting? That's a good point. We fighting a polar bear, black bear, <laughs> like, or a, grizzly? a grizzly, a Kodiak, bro, like a panda. Like what are we fighting out here, bro? It's a koala. Good point. We didn't uh, <laughs> specify, did we? We could be. I didn't a even. Cub. I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the cub. I'm taking the cub. Yeah. Forget the panther. Yeah. We're good. No, nah, but did you hear about that guy? It was a while back. I'm sure you heard of it. But the guy who killed a, you know, a cougar ever in Colorado, he was hiking and stuff. He was jogging, uh, literally suffocated it to death. Really? It was a juvenile. He choked it, it out? Dude, he, he, <laughs> he literally he UFC'd its face. Wow. Bro. He, he literally got down and nasty with a cougar. Yeah, but that's legit. That's what... Dude, this is facts. Like, this is factual. This man killed it, bro. So here's the story. It was a juvenile, so it wasn't like... It was probably still 90 pounds, though, dude. I mean, I think it was like 70 or 90 pounds. That's a big cat, bro. So what happened was he was jogging, like, on a trail... Uh, you can look this up, dude. This is, like, legit. Anybody who's watching right now, look this up. This is facts. That's how he got around it. Factual. Did. Well, here's what happened. He said in the interview or whatever that, like, I guess it was behind him, and he heard it before it jumped. Mm. Before it was about to get him, he just luckily it broke a branch, or he heard it, like, get its grip or whatever it was when it was, like, trying to, you know, you know how cats move, bro. So, like, he might have heard it when it kind of, like, shifted or something. He heard it. And then he turned around, bro, and, like, I guess it got him. Like, I think it scratched him, and, like, it was going for his neck or his throat, and he just wrapped it up, bro. And <laughs> Bruce Lee. He, like, Big Papa pumped it, bro, and just choked it out and killed it and suffocated wow. it, bro. No, I didn't hear about that. That's yeah, pretty amazing. Dude, yes. That's, like, mm. the most savagery you could ever get, bro. That's the most primal thing you could ever do in your life. 
That's like given. I like, guess you should <clears throat> specify. Is it a full grown panther? Are we talking a. Uh, well, on this, if we're fighting, we're talking full grown. We're talking. Right. A, a, but what'd he choke out? A juvenile. A baby. A cougar, too. It's not a panther. <laughs> so we're talking a big difference in size. Okay. okay. Panthers are like huge, like big as this table, probably in length, maybe longer. Yeah. Uh, we're talking that, tall. Dude, I then mean, that's impressive. If we're talking dude, as long as this table, a panther. cat. A panther, yeah. yeah. A cougar's probably maybe nose to tail. A cougar would be this size, and a panther would be a little bit longer, maybe. I don't know the. I'm gonna look up the dimensions of. Uh, That's still uh, good show, guy. Oh yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, hats off to the guy who Pretty suffocated amazing. a cougar. Peta, you can take that, bro. This is self defense. It's the only reason he didn't get a felony. Like you can't kill. Wait like, a minute! You can't yeah. get attacked by a cat and get a oh, felony. No, no, no. That's a, that's the only reason he didn't is because he was attacked. Like I'm pretty sure if you kill oh, like so, stuff like that just randomly, uh, I think right, you get a okay. felony. Literally. But I mean, if you get attacked by a panther and you kill it by choking it out and you get a Bro, charge, you're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're a truth thug. Uh, that's like you are thug life all, for you know yeah all life, bro. All right, yeah. so a cougar is about two to three feet, uh, three feet tall. Uh, Maybe 7.9 feet in length, yeah, and then the they get about 120 to 220 in weight. So that's what we're looking at on a cougar. Now we're going to look up a panther. Uh, that's full grown, by the way, for the cougar. Uh, a black panther, the height, it's like the difference, uh, the jaguar, leopard, tiger. Uh, oh, dude, it looks like a panther is shorter. Really? Yeah, that's, I don't know. That's, How long, though? Maybe, hold on. Uh, uh, they say they get up to 6.4 feet in length. The jaguar does, at least. Is the panther the wiener dog of cats? Yeah, I guess, bro. Like, the mass is 120 to 210, so I guess they can be about the same size, dude. I could right swear about. it would be bigger. Hmm. A leopard, that's weird, man. I guess leopards aren't really that big, but a black panther, I feel like it just looks significantly bigger. I don't know. That's weird, man. Hold on. This is 2. One feet in height and 2.5 feet in, uh, or you know, that could be the height measurements I guess it could get to. Which one's the cat that can run like 70 miles an hour? Probably a cheetah. It's, yeah, cheetah, yeah. yeah. Right. That's cheetah, just insane not that for a biological being to run Dude. no matter what you are. That, so crazy. How fast and is they're it? They're small. They're like, they how only get like 46 to 160 pounds, and the speed on it is... Around about <laughs> sixty-five to seventy-five miles per hour. You imagine that's that? On the interstate. That's, that's like insane. freeway, bro. Yeah, like, that's, that's fast freeway to, driving. I'm going to work, going sixty. That dude's yeah. passing me, dude. Straight that's up, that's insane. Because literally down here on twenty-three, it goes from forty-five to fifty-five, and I usually do five over, so I'm doing sixty if I'm going to wrestle or Flatwoods on Ridiculous. twenty-three right there. So yeah, dude, that thing is literally going faster than that. And that's scooting, dude. Like, I feel like, you know, you can get 60s pretty quick. I mean. You ever took off serious. running just as fast as you could and you feel like you're going. <laughs> you're probably going like, like six miles per hour. Exactly. Like, and he's doing 75. I want to see. Oh, I think I've already looked it up, but I'm going to say the fastest human speed. 28 miles per hour. That's pretty good. <laughs> Bro, that's <laughs> impressive. Yeah. How, how, how could you ever go that fast, bro? Uh, dude, it's 25. Literally, I mean, dude, that's most of Blackburn is 25, and that turns into 35. That's quick, yeah. dude. That's real quick. You're right. I think I've went like eight, maybe nine miles. Yeah, that's night. maximum running. That says like the best Downhill. thing. Dude, that's crazy. A horse runs 55 miles per hour, and a lion runs 50 miles per hour. That's quick, dude. That's real quick. Um, So, yeah, next thing I'm going to ask you is if you could pick – one superpower, what would it be? Yeah. Hmm. What you got, bro? One superpower. Well, I would I want to go the whole Wolverine route and do the uh, oh, yeah, like the we quick were talking healing. Adamantium, bro. But exactly. Oh, yeah, the healing it, factor too. You get the healing factor, but the adamantium, so you're talking that's like, totally separate. So if yeah. you wanted the Wolverine power, you would really wouldn't be getting everything if you picked it. Nah, cuz he's a he's a combination of a lot of mm-hmm. different stuff. I feel like yeah, that's something that it's one of those gray areas, you know. I don't know. It'd be like, I want to get Superman's powers, but which one would I want to pick, you know? That's, that's like, the, the, the crappy part about it, you know? Dude, invisibility would be dope. Dude, invisibility would be real do... sick. It's very underplayed superpowers. It is. You know? Yeah, like, you don't really see a lot of dope, invisible really superheroes. Anything. I mean, you, you, Mrs. Fan- anything. Or, you know, um, you know uh, in the Fantastic Four, Miss Fantastic, was that her name? Was that yeah, her name? yeah. And, uh, was that it? 
Or was it Invisible Girl? I don't even know. Yeah, bro. I don't either. I don't even know what, what I'm talking about. Fantastic Four was always lame to me, though. I never yeah. liked it, bro. Like, I just right. always thought it was real lame. Is Fantastic Four, like, DC? Yes. Uh, no, it's... it's uh, that's right. a really good question <laughs> as well. Uh, I think it's Marvel. I'm going to say it's Marvel. I think you're right. Uh, yeah, Marvel Comics. We got Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, so not Invisible Girl. So we were on the right path, kind of. I just never really liked him. Like, the Human Torch is cool. He's always been my favorite out of the four. Yeah. And the thing is, like, kind of, I don't know. The thing's just never, I don't, I, don't like, I don't like it's it. It's just I weird. I'm just not a big fan, bro. It's like a weird Hulk. Yeah, it's like the whack Hulk. Like, <laughs> like it's the lame version of Hulk. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need you. I got the Hulk. <laughs> like, why are you here? Why are you here, guy? So, I'm going to go Invisible Dude. What invisible. would you pick? Oh, Mine, I'm either going to go with Teleportation. Straight up, like, jumper, you know, like, boom, you know, oh, like, yeah. I just, I just, you know, instant transmission, like, Goku, you know, like, just hit my head, boom, I'm, you know, wherever. Oh. Um, that really beats out invisibility, because, <laughs> it's like, if I want to rob it back, I just got to stand by the door forever, but you just yeah. in out. Yeah, uh, well, it'd either be hmm. teleportation or, man, you want to go telekinesis. Everybody wants to go telekinesis. That's, like, your, you know, standard issue, best power, you know, like... But I'd honestly say either teleportation or uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, I gotta look it up now too because I don't know. I think it's electric discharge. It's what Gambit has. Like what? Like you know his powers? Uh, where he like picks up something, charges it up. Yes. Blows, it, blows up. Yes. I don't know if that's got a name. Uh, it. I think it definitely kinetic energy. I feel like it definitely does. I just can't think of it. Hmm. Uh, like I said, I think it's like. It might be kinetic energy discharge. Like, I think that's what it's called, maybe. We'll go with that. They know what it means. It's something like that. Like, I, I don't think that's right, but it's something along those lines. Uh, man, what's it called? Uh, it just says, like, mutant ability to tap into the potential energy contained within an object and transform it. Zero point. Energy. The zero point. Yeah, like, when Gambit thus charges an object with kinetic energy and throws it at a target, the object releases the energy exploding on impact. So, I, I don't know, like, what you, I, I think it's called Connect and Energy Discharge. I think that's, like, the comic book terminology for it. But it'd be one of those two, bro. Because you gotta think, I mean, Gambit's always kind of been one of my favorite characters, too. I always thought he was real, like... He's got just, the bow staff. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. You already know, <laughs> man. And he's just always been, like, super, super cool to me. I like he's got the Cajun accent, you know. He's just, he's a cool... Gambles. Yeah, he gambles. <laughs> like, he, he, he's a, you know, card shark. He hustles people. And, like, I've always just liked his story, and I like that he's real sleek and sly and, like, but he's a good guy, though, you know? Like, but I don't know. He's kind of an anti-villain, kind of. He's like Wolverine. Like, he's a good guy, but sometimes he's a bad guy. Like, he'll yeah, do some bad stuff. Care. I feel like he'll kill some people, you know? Like, Wolverine definitely killed people. I feel like Gambit will kill people. He's not like Batman, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, where Batman's very honorable and, you know, noble, you know? Like, he's never really killed. He's only killed, like, one dude, and that was Joey Chill. And that's the guy who murdered his. Uh... Yeah, he never killed anybody else. No, I don't think so. He Maybe now I haven't read. Mister a... Freeze or the no, Penguin. He didn't kill any of them. No, I don't. So think he just he... beat his enemies up. <laughs> he just beats them up and lets them get out of prison. He's like, yeah, I'll just catch you later. Mm-hmm. See you in five years, pal. Yeah, you're done for. Uh, I don't. I think I know. I know he killed the guy who killed his parents. It was Joey Chill, or Joey. Yeah, I think Joey Chill. I think Joe Chill or something like Even that. Even if you're a good guy, eventually you gotta. Kills. You gotta kill somebody, you gotta don't kill somebody. you? I feel like it just comes with the territory. You can be good and kill somebody <laughs> on accident, can't you? <laughs> Manslaughter's okay, you know? Uh, it's not that big a of a bad deal. dude. Yeah, like, he was a bad guy, you know? Hmm. You know, you can't stab people, but, you know, I had to. Uh, let me see here. How many people have Batman killed? I really don't know. I, like I said, I know he killed Joe Chill, but 15 times. Oh, he's killed 15 <laughs> Way people. off, dude. Yeah, I was yeah. way off, bro. I thought he killed one guy. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. 15 is as brutal times, too. So I guess he gets nasty when he does it, bro. Hmm. But I know Joe Chill was one of those guys. I mean, I think you ever get Bane name. back? You know how Bane, like, broke his back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever kill him? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that was one of them. But, yeah, Joe Chill was definitely one of them that he killed. Uh, did Batman ever kill Bane? I don't know, bro. I put Babe. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Slacking. All right, hold on here. Uh, Batman, who was temporarily... Uh, 
Nah, dude, he didn't kill him. Bane wow. survived his injuries due to the enhanced stamina from his venom or from his uh, venom supplies. So mm-hmm. yeah, he just pretty much beat him up again. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're yeah. not worthy of the 15, homie. Like you can't you can't do this, bro. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool, uh, dude. Seriously, let's just go ahead and put it out there that the Dark Knight series was seriously the best adaptation of Batman there's ever been and probably ever will be. Let's be clear. Uh, we're talking the movie. We're talking the movies. Yeah, not cartoon wise, but movie wise, bro. You hear about the Dark Knight uh, was good. Joaquin Phoenix doing the new Joker. Joker yeah, I've watched the trailers, man. It's Maybe looking good. It's Maybe. looking like it could be, but it could get real, Dude. real lame, real quick. And it's so hard to follow Heath Ledger after you know he died right yeah, after that. So literally. how do you how do you top that? I mean, I, you, you know, know, you try, you yeah. try your best, but you don't. I guess. So. And, and also, I mean, I, in my opinion, dude, like I said, it's probably the best adaptation we've seen. Give it straight up. Yeah. Either, I'll give you that. Either well, for movies wise, we're talking all around. I mean, obviously the comic books are legit, but the original, the Batman the animated series or whatever, that one was sick, bro. The one that was like in the late eighties, I think. Dude, that was real good. Dude, I'm real still good. Hanging on to Michael Keaton. Bro, yeah, he was legit. <laughs> like, I mean, I gotta give it up. He I mean, he was definitely second best. In my opinion, that was the first like real Batman movie. Good call. And uh Val Kilmer, you had it. you had George Clooney, Val Kilmer, Michael Keaton, now Ben Affleck. <sighs> they just slayed Adam West. Different people, you know what I mean? Like everyone was um, a new Batman. Yeah, I know, bro. I Should don't know why. kept it consistent. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. It makes no sense. I couldn't go back to Adam West. I used to watch them when I was yeah, a kid. Yeah, they came in like the 60s or something, but or like 70s Dude, maybe? there was this one where they were hanging on this helicopter ladder, yeah. and a shark jumped up and bit Batman's foot, and they yeah. busted out the shark spray. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So corny. After that, I was like, yeah, I'm good. So corny, bro. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, came out in 1966. Mm, yep, like mm, I said, I said mm. 60s. I thought maybe. I don't know. Uh, that one was god-awful, but it needed to happen for it yeah. to get better. They need to learn from their mistakes. Uh, let's go ahead and throw it out there. This is kind of off topic, but, like, dude, how cool was Gargoyles? Did you watch Gargoyles? I have no idea what you're oh talking about. Oh, my God. I'm so upset you haven't seen it. It's seriously probably the coolest cartoon that you've ever seen. Do you have a fire stick at your house? I got a Roku stick. Okay, well, you can get Cody on your Xbox, bro. Like you can get like you can download it on your thing or whatever. So, you could you could probably pull it up on YouTube or find like some like, you know, whatever on the internet to watch Gargoyles. Please, bro, take the time. It's well worth it. It's fill me great. In. Uh, okay, so pretty much Gargoyles the story is like it, it's uh, they're actually all named besides Goliath after all the boroughs in uh you know the big boroughs in New York, you know, Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, well, just Bronx, uh, you know, whatever, so on and so forth. So they are gargoyles, but they're like let me pull up a picture and kind of give you some context. So we're talking like statues that chill on corners of buildings. Yes, and but at nighttime, when it's not the daytime, they come alive, bro, and they're like super intense and they fight crime and like they're legit like good. Uh yeah. they're like good guys, you know what I mean? But there's also other gargoyles who are not good guys. But these gargoyles, they're like vampires pretty much. They've been around for thousands of years. So it's like a big Wait story. Wait a minute, that looks really familiar. Yes, you've seen it, I know, bro. Yeah. It's so good. I don't um, think I ever got deep into it. I do remember it now. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, you got to think, though, bro. Like, you know, you're a little bit older than me. So, like, you know, I was a kid, like, loving this. You were probably right. a grown man by the time, like, you know, it was like, <laughs> you're trying you know. to say, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I do remember it, Are you older than though. my brother? Uh, I'm 37. Oh, yeah, you're older than my brother then. Yeah, I think he's 32. Yeah. Maybe. Tell him oh, I say what's up, too. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, bro. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is really cool, dude. If you get a chance, anybody who hasn't seen it before, definitely check it out. It is really, really cool. Uh, and you gotta give it a chance, man. I, I think you'll love it, dude. Yeah. The animation's really, really cool, too. Like, it's, like, simplistic, but it's actually, like, it looks cool, though, you know? Like, it was definitely ahead of its time, in my opinion. Uh, but, God, it was so good, man, seriously. <laughs> I loved it, man. I introduced my daughter to it and stuff, like, you know, probably a year ago. She loved it. She thought it was really cool, too, you know? She also really, really loved uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, like the original, Dude. like the cartoon. Dude, we got deep in that. So good. So good, man. You remember the game for Super Nintendo? Oh, God, The yeah. Ninja Turtles yeah, game? Yeah, I remember the one so for good. Nintendo. Oh, yeah, you're talking the out. hard one. Oh, yeah. The, probably the hardest yeah. game you've ever played in your life is that game, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty sick. I don't think I ever Real did it. Real difficult. 
I don't think you can. I think I got to the second part where you're in the paddy wagon driving <laughs> around to different buildings. I don't even think you're allowed to beat that game. <laughs> I feel like once you beat it, they're like, nah, you got more. Yeah. Like, you ain't beating this, bro. We taking lives on principle. <laughs> like, you ain't got nothing. Remind me, though, Super Nintendo, that was the one where it was just like the arcade Side by game. side? Arcade it was, game. It was yeah, side yeah, by yeah. side. You could have two people. You pick whatever brother you want. Uh, you go through. You fight. It's like Mario, pretty much, like to a degree. But you're you're fighting. You're actually fighting using your weapons, and then you fight the boss, and then many bosses. You go through. But like I said, side by side until it switches to um, different uh, variations of the game, different parts of the game where you'll be facing forward, and then it's like I'm pretty sure it's first person, but it maybe it's third person. I don't know, but it's definitely there's parts where. You have to, like, go back and forth. It's still side-by-side, side, I guess, but it's more forward-facing. I'm you thinking know I mean? the arcade version where you're on the street running mm-hmm. down the oh, street. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, I, don't, I don't know what one, what console that would have came out on. Hmm. I feel like that was Nintendo, too, like, like before Super Nintendo. Because yeah. there was none for 64, I don't think. There was no Ninja Turtle games for 64. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it was just Super Nintendo, and then yeah, I don't even know when the next one came out. Uh, N64 was dope too though man it was a very very ahead of its time uh, we got deep into Zelda and Perfect Circle at the same time at that point now any time that I listen to Perfect Circle or I play Zelda I hear the other one (laughs) that's hilarious bro I love Zelda dude Zelda was so good. Which one uh, are you talking, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask? Both. Both were pretty dope for sure but Ocarina of Time was dude, classic uh, I guess there was actually a game for it. I think it might have been the next one after the game I'm talking about, but it might. Uh, I don't you, remember. Did you play the uh, the Switch Zelda game that came out fairly recently? Breath of the Wild. No, I, but, dude. I bought a Switch just yeah, to play I got, that. I bought a Switch just to get Mario Kart. Really? <laughs> <laughs> for I got a Switch too, bro. I got a little bit into it and couldn't couldn't deal with it. Really, my dude? Because he said it was sick, man. Brian it was Kazee, pretty good. Yeah, he said it was, it was pretty. He good. said it was real good, bro. He said it was fun. Uh, I think they might have already had a couple DLCs come out for it, too. And, like, they might be doing another one. Like, not Breath of the Wild, but I think they're doing another Zelda game soon. Yeah. Uh, Zelda was sick, though, dude. Ocarina of Time, I was, like, real young, bro, and beat it, like, impressively. Like, you know what really? I mean? Like, dude, I was sick. Like, I beat Mario All-Stars, all those games, what's on there, to Mario 3. Uh, I think there's a Yoshi game on there, too. There's, like, three or four games on All-Stars. I beat all those games when I was eight years old, dude. Mm. Wow. Eight, bro. Slamming it on Super Nintendo. Killed it, dude. By myself, bro. Like, I was a beast, dude. Like, I've always been good at video games, man. Like, I don't know what it is. It's like, it just came naturally, and I did it all the time. So I was, you know, whatever. It was really funny, you know, speaking to my brother. He used to, like, stomp me in all the video games. He used to put it on me, dude. And, uh... Especially Tony Hawk. That's why I got good at Tony Hawk, because he was so good. Like, he would murder me, bro. And, like, really? he dropped millions on me, bro. Like, literally. And I'd be in the hundred thousands or something. And then I kept playing and kept playing and kept playing and got real good. And then I came back. I was like, hey, bro, you know, because, like, you know, we didn't live together. We didn't grow up together. You know, our parents got divorced, so we, you know, lived three hours apart. You know, I didn't move back down here for, you know, until, like, you know, 2010 or whatever, 2009. So, <laughs> in that time period, I don't know when it was, but he came up to the house or I came down here and I was like, "Hey, Bob." I was like, "You know, you know, let's play some, let's play some Tony Hawk, bro." And I already knew he was about to get smoked, bro. He didn't know what was about to go down. Did he crying? Oh, bro, I beat him. I was, I destroyed nice. him. And, and like, he wasn't ready, bro. He he thought he was gonna be able to take it chill on me. Ready. And like, bro, I just started destroying him for real. Uh, and then I was like, "Yeah, that's uh, that's a wrap." Now I can pretty much beat anybody at Tony Hawk because he was good, man. Like, like I said, he, I mean, he. He played it when it first came out for Dreamcast, bro. You know, I remember playing it then. You know, like old school Tony Hawk when it the first one that ever came out, bro. Like it was awesome, and uh, I just got really good at it. Like I said, man. And then I didn't meet anybody that could beat me. After him, he was the last person I've ever met that could beat me. Dude, Nert was good at Tony Hawk. Yeah, praise to us. <sighs> Next time he comes over, we're probably gonna have to get Ben. Yeah, I think this yeah. is really about to go down because I need to see what this man's about. For real, because I have Proving Ground still, man, like really? for 360, yeah. yeah. I was going to order it from a PS4 or Xbox One just for good measure, you know, <laughs> like just get like the most updated version they have if they've done any like, you know, different things to it or whatever. It's been years since it came out, but that was like my favorite one, like that and Underground 2. God, I can get filthy on them, bro. I never got great at games. Really? I, I w- I'd love to play them, but alone because everybody else was a lot better than me. <laughs> 
I love to play video games, but yeah. I'm not any good at competing. I'm not better than you. I'm definitely yeah. just going to play alone <laughs> easily. <laughs> I got really, really competitive once again because my brother, he's super competitive. And, like, we mm-hmm. would always, like, that was one of our things we had, like, was video games. Like, movies and video games and music, like, that was always our thing. He got me into a lot of the music I like, and then I branched off, started doing my own thing and finding new bands or whatever. Uh, he got me into a lot of the movies I like. Same thing with my cousin Chris, you know. Like, they gave me a lot of, you know, they gave me the juice, bro. You know, <laughs> like, they gave me the sauce, and I just ran with it. You know yeah. what I mean? But they always liked really cool stuff, and it got me into it. And, like, that was one of our things. It was just our thing, you know. And, like I said, my brother's super competitive. He's Him and my dad are the reason I did played sports, too, you know. Like, and I was super competitive myself. Never a sore loser. Never, man. I'm humble enough to take my licks, you know what I mean. But at the same time. I don't want to lose. I'm gonna, right. get, I'm gonna get fired up. Like I want to. I want to go hard and win. You know. I mean, I'm an honorable loser as well. You know, I can. I can take an L. Yeah. Uh, you got to. Got to, bro. And it, people who don't, they just make me mad. Like they've got too many participation trophies, bro. <laughs> like you've never lost. Like, and I hate that. And like for my kids, man, I know this sounds horrible, but like I'm gonna let them know, even you know when they play sports stuff. Like if, if they just get a participation, you know, participation trophy or whatever, I'm gonna let them know. Like, you know. You shouldn't want that. You should want to win, bro. Winning feels good. But you also need to be honorable when you lose. I'm not saying, like, you can never lose. It's not like I'm going to beat you if you lose, you know. I'm not Joe, you know, Joe Jackson over here, you yeah. know. Like, I, I'm not going to beat on you, but I want you to win, you know, and I'm going to encourage you, and we're going to practice, and we're going to do it, you know. Like, I want you to be a winner, you know, but it feels good to win, and it feels good to earn a trophy, you know. No, it's something that's really stuck with me. What? Is knowing that you, you have to have a bad day to know you've had a good one. Dude, that is deep right there, baby. I like that. That is awesome, man. Yeah, that is definitely. Any time I have a bad day, I'm just thinking, man, this is building up to something great. Dude, seriously, that's like, that. that's what blessings are about, man. Like, mm-hmm. being blessed, that's what it's really about. And, you know, you have to go through, you know, quote, unquote, hell to you know, see what heaven's like, you know, not to use a, you know, not to use the, you know, uh, you know, Christian motto or whatever, but at the same time, like it, the metaphor and, or, you know, analogy or whatever, however you want to look at it, it is a good reference. It really yeah. is, you know, like it's true. And another cool perspective I thought of last week, I was talking to somebody and I was like, I never thought of this perspective, man, but what if, you know, if it's not like, you know, heaven and hell or whatever, if it's not, Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism, whatever, man. But what if our mind is like the heaven or hell per se in its own perspective, in its own realm, and that's where we get trapped once we die? Like what if it's like this is where you're at and like that's where you stay, but the shell you shed just kind of goes. But whether that goes over here or that goes over here or it becomes a part of the earth again or if it goes to the universe or if you're reincarnated, I don't know that part. But I thought that was really cool that, like, maybe it's all in our minds, not our brain, because that's not your mind. Like, it is, exactly. but it isn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it, you get what I mean. Not your soul, because I don't want to be corny, but it, it's kind of your soul, you know, your consciousness or whatever, your energy. Uh, so I thought that was a really cool perspective. Like, what if God is us, like, not trying to be Satanism or nothing like that. I'm not trying to say I'm a God. I'm saying, like, all of us. What if we are the actual gods or demigod or, you know, whatever you want to call it? And our mind is the actual heaven and hell that we have manifested. Mm. Mm-mm. Pretty cool perspective, dude. <laughs> yeah. I was real psyched when I thought. I about love it. deep thinking, dude. So yeah, definitely. it's good for you. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You, your brain needs to be fed. Absolutely. You gotta feed that thing, man. You ever you think know? about why, like, we like games the way we do? How most games like board nowadays? Games or video, no, or more like games, more like general. video games where they uh, you're leveling up constantly. It's like. It's I like think, rewarding, and it like it's like kind of strokes your ego a little bit too. Maybe I well, feel like that plays into it. I think it's uh, there's some deep part of us that is actually growing all the time, and I think oh like evolution. I You're think like, like leveling up, right? Part yeah. of our mind is uh, is hooked to that, and that's why so many games have that aspect to them right, where man. they. Eh, I'm good, thank you. Bro. Thanks, man. You're good, bro. Um, but I, I just think that's why most games are like that because there's something in us <coughs> that is tied to that. Feels better. Why do you think more people like Skyrim than they did God of War? Because God of War, you don't really level up. You do, but you don't. Like, it's mm. different. Like, yeah, on God of point. War, you kind of, like, you get new weapons or moves, but it's not, like, a level. Like, it, in some of them you did, I think. Maybe on two on two or one, maybe. I don't think on three or four, though. 
uh, or the other variation spinoffs they had. Um, but, dude, you're right, though. It's a great, valid point you're making. Like, it just feels better. It's more rewarding. Like I said, maybe subconsciously it's stroking our ego. Um, it could be because we like to be in control of what we're doing, maybe. Like, maybe it's something along those lines. Like, it could go into a lot of different things. Yeah. But it's weird because we level up ourselves, like you said. Think about the whole life. reincarnation thing. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of evidence that points toward that. Well, what if we are truly this energy that keeps coming back to learn Leveling different lessons, up. just like a video game? Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's a great that's a great thing to bring up because you got to think like that. Also brings you to the point of, you know, why some people don't ascend and some people get stuck here. That brings up the spirit thing, you know, because mm. I want you to tell some some ghosty stories too, bro. Oh, you dude, know what I, I mean? got I got such a yeah. Deep we're, we're we're gonna get to it right after this. Yeah. Because I think it might have the, it, it it like correlates with that and it makes sense and that kind of proves that if that's the case because if you haven't ascended or wherever you're whatever's happening maybe you get stuck here or maybe you reincarnate and, or maybe you keep reincarnating until your consciousness is I don't want to say you know deserving of the ascension or whatever but kind of that's the best way I could put it you know like mm-hmm. almost like. Valuable enough to ascend. Leveled up enough. To Leveled up enough. Straight up, you mm-hmm. hit 120 the cap. Now you're on a different level of consciousness. Now you're you are God or mm-hmm. something along those lines. You know, like maybe the gods of Egypt. Maybe that's where they came from. Maybe, maybe they these, ascended. These are just ideas. Yeah, they, we don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We're just morons. We just like talk to about cool stuff. Put it know? all together, man. <laughs> For real, man. Mm. But I feel like that's a great valid point, and those are really cool perspectives to look at, man. But let's hear some ghosty stories, man. Freak me out, dude. Let's give me some chill bumps, man. Right. Freak these people out. I want to hear some crazy stuff because me, before you even get into it, I have never experienced a true paranormal activity true demon angel any type of spiritual thing like that i've never experienced myself i've had my mind play tricks on me and i see stuff that's not there but that could just be my mind you know like but i've never i've never felt nothing dude check it out (laughs) so i had a best friend he's passed away now but he was a uh, funeral home director okay okay so we would hang out all the time drink a couple beers kick it and he would get called on um called on at night to go pick up a body. Yeah, people would die, you know. Yeah. Well, I had never seen a dead person before, period. Wow. And uh, one night, he took me there to, he had to dress this this lady. And uh, and I went in and I actually saw her. His first dead person I ever saw. Wow. So, dead lady. He had to get her dressed, all that. We did that. We went back to his house. It didn't really, like, uh, blow my mind too much, you know? Yeah, I mean. It's, it's just kind of like, life. Oh, that's, I think that's weird. Yeah, like, yeah. I think, uh, you know, we're numb to trauma. Yeah. To a degree, all of us are, subconsciously and instinctually, I feel like. So the weird part is that we got back to his house, yeah. and I slept on the couch that night. Sure. So I'd had probably six beers or something. Yeah, nothing yeah, major. Nothing crazy. Wasn't, wasn't gone. Wasn't yeah. you, were the, you were very aware of what was going on in your life at that point. At that point, I tried to go to sleep. I had work the next day. Yeah. So I tossed. How old were you when this happened? Uh, I was 26, 7, okay. something like that. So I uh, tossed and turned on that couch forever, mm-hmm. and just knowing, like, God, you've got it. you got to sleep just two hours. Just sleep <laughs> two hours. Then you can get up. Just you you'll be okay. Clock or yeah. Wherever a clock I just is, knew like I had to work, and counting I down the hours could the not sleep. So eventually what happened was I dozed off a little bit. I yep. think that finally it was like, yes, open my eyes. Yeah. Okay, laying on the couch on my back, open yeah. my eyes, and there <sighs> is this... It looked like to me like an old '80s hologram. You know those cards they used to have that it would look uh, yeah, yeah, holographic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. They would have. It, it's like uh, it, like when it, however you do it, like move it, it like shines. They had them on Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh yeah, cards, okay. stuff like that. So, Baseball too, probably like to a degree. Open my eyes, and I've got this old lady. Yeah, that you just saw dead. I thought so. I, I connected those. Yeah. So this old lady like an inch from my face giving me this evil look and it was like like I'm staring at you right now yeah. touching your arm yeah. that's how real Ooh, okay God. so at this point I open my eyes this this ugly holographic lady in my face like give me this weird look after about 15 seconds she dissipated and kind of just dissolved into you know the wow. wall after that happened, I noticed that I was in sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. I couldn't move a thing. Dude. I, dude, what I wanted to do was scream 
Tyler as loud yeah, as I could, yeah, yeah. and I could not talk at all. Yeah. Whoa, dude. So eventually, I, I'm like, I can't move. Uh, she dissipated, and then I'm taking a deep breath, like, oh, that's over. Gee, what the? All right. <laughs> Anxiety. Then, yeah. so I still can't move, right? Yeah. And I get these waves of vibration going through me, oh up and God. down my body, right? This and I'm spooky, bro. dude. I thought like, uh, I thought it felt good. Yeah. I was like, that feels whatever like that endorphins, is. Like endorphins I don't know what that something. is. Yeah, well, yeah. it was uh, like the, adrenaline. I think it was just my body actually vibrating. Because it, once Release you learn about the whole maybe? out of body and the astral projection, mm -hmm. you feel that a lot. That's crazy. But anyway, so, I, so I'm laying there. I can't move. She dissipates, yeah. goes away, and then up on the wall, yeah. I'm dead awake, yeah. dude. I'm me yeah. looking at you oh, awake. Yeah, bro. This this little girl yeah. was floating on the wall. She was holographic looking too, and this like magic stuff was going on around her. It was like sparkly stuff, and she looked at me and just gave me this look like you're cool. Chill out. Seriously. That's not So true. she's up in the... So I see oh, the God. crazy old lady stare me down an inch Creepy. from my face. She dissipates, goes away. Then I look up and this little girl is like, you're cool. It's cool, man. Yeah. She's like a five-year-old. Was it speaking to you or could you just... It was like it, you were feeling it like telepathy almost or like a connection that was just Neither. telling you that or was it energy or it was, was it that's, talking? That's right. There was no words or yeah. thoughts. It was more yeah. like... That looks a lot better than yeah. that did. <laughs> so, so she, after a minute, looking at me and sparkling yeah. and stuff, she sure. dissipated and went away. That's then amazing. I slowly started moving my body and Feeling. got up. And my buddy at this point had just went to take a shower, get ready for yeah, work. Yeah. When he got in there, I sat up, finally mm -hmm. could sit up and just told him everything, dude. It blew his mind, blew my mind, dude. That whole day was like a new day for me, That's for real. <laughs> Dude, new day. I'm bro. talking about if you were to sit here right now, saw mm -hmm. a ghost right in front of you, how yeah. real that would be. That's how real that was. Dude, it, like I said, I've honestly never experienced it. Like, I kind of uh, want to to a degree because I'm yeah. weird. I've been chasing it ever yeah, since. Yeah, like, it's like a weird, like, it's something, it's like a train wreck. You don't want to look, but you kind of have to. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like that's, that's kind of how it works with, like, spiritual encounters. And that brings me to another point, bro, of something that's very strange and kind of personal to me. But, you know, I'm going to talk about it because I, I really don't care. Um, but after my dad died, man, uh, you know, I didn't really have too much time to mourn. I'm not going to go into it too much because I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to put no bad energy out there. But I didn't really have time to mourn some events that happened that had brought me to, you know, whatever. Um, so he passed away, you know, and then... Like six months after that, bro, or like a year after that, I just had a bunch of dreams that were just really bizarre. And like, it, 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 the reason I'm saying this because it references to what you're talking about. That's why I was asking you: was she actually talking to you, or were you feeling it, or like, were you no, you just knew? That same thing happened to me in dreams with my dad, man. Like, I swear, it was so weird. We, I feel like we were talking the whole time, but it wasn't even words. But I also feel like we wouldn't even talk at all. But we knew that he was dead, but we wouldn't talk about it, but we knew we would just like, it was something we wouldn't even say. And like the words that were coming out weren't even real. And I was also watching a replay. It wasn't even like I was in my body, like first person, what we see. It was like I was watching from a different perspective and it was like a replay of something like you're watching on Madden or something, you know, Thank real you. bizarre, dude, like symbolic. I tried to look up symbolic reasons and stuff and. Like, I mean, I was just searching, you know, trying to find something to latch on to, but just a bunch of crazy different stuff it said yeah. about why I was dreaming like that. Well, it's that weird. weird dream stuff, man. I think that's a lot to do subconsciously, or you don't, like, look yeah, at it's it and say... Yeah, it's manifestation, man. Yeah, I, I think, think you it's manifest that. a way for our mind to learn that this weird, crazy way that we bizarre. can't think of in this state. You yeah, know I mean? like, in reality, it's, it's too bizarre, dude. Maybe we can't handle it, or maybe we can't channel it then, or whatever, man, but... I don't know. It's it, like I said. That kind of goes with what you were saying. Like it, nobody was talking, but you knew. You feel it. It's like it's like oh, yeah. telepathy almost, dude. Exactly. It's like you feel what is happening, yeah. and like you don't even have to say nothing, and nothing is going on in your brain. Like you're like when you stop and think, and you're talking in your brain to yourself. Like you you don't have to talk out loud. You can just talk to yourself in your brain. You know, like that wasn't happening at all, and it never happened, and we never even had to say anything, but we knew what we were doing, dude. It was creepy, man. That was the first weird oh, thing. Oh, ghosty story? Oh, you got more? Dude, I got a lot more. Bro, bring, bring like, some in, more, son. Yeah, I don't know if I want to tell them all right yeah, now, I, man. Yeah, drop drop, drop, drop another one, and then we'll go to something else. All right, all right, let me think here. Yeah, think of a real weird one. A real weird one. But the dream state okay. is a very bizarre thing, man, and it really freaks me I, out. I've got a pretty good one, anyway. Yeah. It's not as intense, like, yeah, yeah, me yeah. to you yeah, ghost yeah, yeah, in my yeah. face, but yeah. it was right after my best friend had died. Mm -hmm. This was probably a week after or so, yeah. that I'm... 
I'm laying, and you may have been through something like this too, but yeah. I, I was laying in bed and I knew like I knew like I knew something was right mm -hmm. next to me to the point where it scared me so much that I rode over it. Went under the covers just knowing something's there. You I mean, feel it. dude, it was Weird. more than more than even knowing. Yeah. It was like something's right next to me, yeah. period. Like, I felt it. I felt it, bro. Like when I've, I've been walking before and I felt it. Been in my car before driving and felt it. But I never paid attention. I always think it's just my mind. I think it's just like yeah. because of our our brains are so complex and our mind, not just our brain, but our actual like we talked about soul, mind, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I feel like it's so complex, man. That's the whole thing with DMT. It's Dude. either one. Of, it's either one of two things. DMT is either legit just drugs, like a drug that you take that's a psychedelic that you do whatever with, and it's your brain firing these really really crazy things that makes you see and feel and hear and smell all those things. Or you were legit yeah. getting on a different plateau of consciousness or living or whatever you want to call it. And you're actually seeing what reality actually is. But we can only see it through activation with that. No, One I of the two. Wait. Can't wait to try that. One of the two, bro. Yeah, I've never tried it either, man. Uh, the the other real quick thing I wanted to oh, say for is sure. I was I was just saying like I was just like no that's cool because that, I know, like it's kind of the same thing. It could dude, be one or the other. You know? Totally connected. It's like a fifty fifty. Totally you connected. Know? But the uh, the other thing is the whole out of body stuff. Yeah. Like once you do Dr. that, strange style, son. Dude, you think uh, crazy out here? No, I mean that will totally wake you up to everything. Change your life humbles you. I feel like too. To be able to go away from yourself, be totally conscious and awake, and yeah. then see something else, blow your mind. Got to work on that, dude. Yeah, dude, super, I would love to. super cool. It takes some. I feel like it takes a lot of dedication. It and, does, yeah. And like we yeah. talked about, I feel like it also de it also depends on what you put in your body. I feel like it, what you eat, what you listen to, what you watch, what you see, what you deal with with stress. I feel like everything, Absolutely. every one of those things, you know. That's why you got to think, like you know, monks and stuff like that. They don't have sex. They don't drink alcohol. They don't do drugs. They don't smoke cigarettes. They don't watch TV. They read or they meditate or they do stuff like that. All of us are so True. prone to watching TV and on the internet and our phones and, you know, alcohol and Absolutely. There know. there are a lot of factors, but yeah. I definitely think that every single person has Can the do it. ability you do, like to the Stargate, you know? I, like I, it, when I started researching it, uh there were some people that it took a month, two months, three months, or whatever. It took me three years. Dude, yeah, some people, that's three what I'm talking years. about. It might take years for somebody so to you do You really got to try to do this. It's crazy, man. But you I'll tell you it, one you know? other really cool thing. Yeah. If you, uh, when you go to bed tonight, yeah. tonight, do this. For sure. Try to keep your mind awake. Yeah. Don't move your body whatsoever. You're going to have this weird itch on your face or your neck or wherever. Mm -hmm. Don't scratch it and just don't move and then move. wait to see what happens. Are you about to lucid dream? Insane. The feelings, you'll get the really? vibrations. And if you can go far enough, you can get out. Dude. Not playing. That's intense, Dude, man. That is awesome. That's really awesome. And I love learning things like that. And I love spreading awareness of things like that because, you know, we're just some hippie tree hugging lovers over here. You know, that's how we get down, bro. We like the weird stuff, you know, and like. Dude. That's what it is, like learning about the weird stuff, having the knowledge, spreading knowledge to the youth. That's how you change the world, man. That's how you change the world. You spread yeah. knowledge. You give honesty to people. You let them make their own decisions. You let them do things. You let them know that there's tyranny happening. You know, <laughs> you let them know what's going on, and they change their minds about things, and then they work together. I think it's all subjective. Like everything in reality is because – I like to believe in certain things, and then I see in my life those things start to happen. Oh, yeah. Or those uh, Law of connected dots, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Law of attraction is legit. I feel like if you put good in the world, good will come to you. I feel like I got some bad karma chasing me just because of things I did in my past. But I feel like I'm, you know, I've got, I've already paid for most of them. You know, like I feel like I have, man. I feel like I paid for most of the karmas that I deserve as a human. Because everybody does, and everybody does dirt. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter how small. You'll pay for it eventually. Something yeah. will come back and get you. Yeah, I, I, dude, I had a lot of bad stuff too, but you know yeah, what I did? The what? people that I hated the most, I tried to forgive the best dude, I could. I, I at least said it over and over. I don't know if I really <laughs> you did. Took, but, you took the words out of my uh, mouth, bro. That's one of the things I did. Let that stuff go. I hit go. them up direct, directly, went to their houses. I talked to people that are close to me that have done me you know, whatever, or I might have felt a certain way about how they acted or reacted or treated me that I might have taken personally or whatever it may have been at the time, hit them up, forgave them, let them know, I love you, you know, even though we're not cool or, excuse me, whatever it is what it is, 
I forgive you. Dude, just doing that alone makes you it feel better. It makes you feel oh, great, geez. dude. And letting that go, uh, dude. Like, you know, and I was just talking to somebody about this literally two days ago about, you know, I was just talking to her about, you know, about forgiving and stuff and that maybe she should just, you know, just try it just to maybe do it because it just feels so It'll good. It'll make you feel better, definitely. And if you forgive yourself for all the wrong you've done, man, and just let it just that's go. The, that's dude. the really hard let one. Let it go, That bro. one, dude, because you replay that stuff over and yes, over. But dude. if you could let that go, if you can f- what, what did Monk say? It's like hang, holding on to a hot coal. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. The anger real, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mind over matter, you know, like mm. things like that. You know, if you don't mind, it don't matter. Yeah, if you learn anything from this, try that. For real, dude. Forgive people, man. Truly. Not like just say it. Not just like, oh, yeah, I forgive you, bro. For, right, but you know, I secretly hate yeah, you know, a like, little I'm, bit. I'm still mad at you, yeah. and I still really care about how your life is going. No, you legitimately, you forgive, man. And you let it go with all your all your being in you. You know, everything you got, your mind, everything. And then, obviously, as humans tend to do and as human nature has you know pressed on us uh we might still feel some resentment maybe because i feel like you just can't get rid of that to a degree I it's hard totally agree it's it hard, is super. you know like i feel like that's the one that's just tough to get rid of you can still forgive somebody but i feel like the resentment is subconsciously there you may have that you're right you and, know, and like, you may have that but you, if you just try and you, it, but my thing is I'm not trying to downplay it at all, and let me be clear about that, people. I'm not trying to downplay it at all, but at the same time, I just want to be a realist about it, and I feel like the resentment might be there subconsciously, but if you try to forgive somebody and you truly try to forgive yourself, I feel like it's, one, good for your mental health. Uh, Two, it's good for everybody around you, and it's good for everybody who's been affected. Uh, You know, and three, uh, you know, it's just... At least you're trying, man. At least you're trying to just feel better. Dude, one and two is enough yeah. for me, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, also, the whole thing about forgiving people is, I, I don't know, man. Like I said, it's just, it, it, you know, like we talked about, it's such just a relief off of you, and it's yeah. something that is needed to be done in order for you to get on with your life. Because who's hanging on to that? You. It's the absolutely. energy that sticks, man. And when we understand that, because we, I feel like we are taught everything absolutely backwards. Yeah. Now. Like, it's not, it is not the outside things that are happening that yeah. did, did, that make you feel the, the way you feel. The it's external, it's you know? the way you feel that is creating the next scene in your yeah. life. Dude. And we could go deep into oh, that, yeah, too, 100%, dude. 100%, man. But we are absolutely taught backwards. We really are. It's really strange on how people they would rather care about their possessions than care about their health or care about what they're putting in their bodies or how they feel about how our world is or our environment. Like, it's so weird that people are like, yeah, climate change is a hoax. What hoax are we talking about, bro? What hoax is this? Or is this alleged? Are we allegedly dying? Like, dude, are you kidding me? If you think climate change is a hoax... Please, you, you you need to do some research. Even the need, little stuff, though, dude. Even yeah. The, oh, you, yeah, I'm going big scale. You know, I'm you know, I'm talking like a big thing. But even the everyday life stuff, yeah. you know? 100%, man. That's the big... I just want to tell uh, just a quick story about For that. For sure, yeah. A way that I look at reality and literally creating the next scene in your life based Absolutely. on how you think and feel. Manifestation, So I've got friend. a really good one. Check this out. So there's a guy that uh, he wanted to get this awesome car stereo. Yeah. Okay, It's the nicest, coolest one, brand new out. He loved it, wanted it. Sure. So he goes to the store and only had so much money. So okay. he had to get the step below that car stereo. Got gotcha. you. So what happens is uh, he puts it in his car. He's like, oh, yeah. it's good. It's okay. I really one of that one but all right settle this is how life works basically yeah. his car got broken into they stole the cruddy one right but what happened is he claimed it on his insurance uh-huh. and his insurance gave him just enough money back from that radio and to fix his car yeah. damages that was to the penny for the one that he Dude. wanted and that is That's how great. reality works it really and does, we man. don't get that we don't no. see the quantum Mm-mm. step to it and people want to leave it to I don't even know. It's not like people don't want to manifest stuff. They want it just to happen. They expect it to just happen. But you got to put that energy out there, dude. If you want something great to happen to you, you can't just be a scumbag your whole life. And you can't have one bad thing determine that's it. Yeah, that yeah, one yeah, bad that, thing is good, leading to the next. That's a great perspective to throw on it. That's like the other perspective of it. You got to know both. You know, like straight up. You you know, it's either or. Um, but it's just so, it's so bizarre to me that like, you know, like I said, man, people 
we're taught backwards not only, but it's like people want to worry about the wrong things and they don't want to – they want to live in this bubble and they don't want to look at reality objectively. They don't want to look at it without – experience or anything like that they want to look at it they don't want to look at it objectively man and people need to do that it gets weird when you don't and it gets weird when people are wanting to you know you got people who don't even know like back to the climate change thing you got people who are so just in their own bubble they don't realize that people are profiting and exploiting us off of oil and excuse me oil and coal and all these things that are just cheaper to do it's cheaper to do those instead of you know uh you know solar panels or uh, wind turbines you know stuff like that so you know you got people like the Koch brothers who are you know literally just exploiting us and one of them just died (laughs) literally dave i think dave Koch. no it was really cool this dude that i was watching give a conference on this sort of thing that there was a guy that stood up and he was like well, there are these FEMA camps, and there's these things that uh, you there know is. the government's doing, and and it's all this. And the there is. guy giving the lecture basically said, "Well, if you use the way you think and feel mm-hmm. to determine the next scene every single moment, in every moment, yeah. then you are going to create something to where you'll never focus on that. That's true. You will literally have your day, go through work, yeah. whatever you're doing, and you'll never see that sort of thing. Yeah. That's not saying turn a blind eye to it. That's saying to literally subjectively create your reality moment yeah. to moment to moment. If you do that based on your thoughts and feelings and keep it as high as you can, For then real. your life insanely good. Dude, that's 100%. I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't. That's that's legit. Uh, another thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you another shout out right now, bro, because I remember you posted, I think it was a video or it was a it was an article or something you posted just a while back, and I read it, man, and it made perfect sense to me, bro. It talked about instinct. It was the difference between instinct, subconscious, and, like, uh, all the other, like, things. It's been a while, bro. You probably don't even remember, but, like, mm-hmm. I remember you shared it. You were one of the, you were the guy that I saw share it, and I read it, and, dude, it made so much sense to me, and it put me on a different, you know, new day for me, bro. You had the weird awesome. old lady new day. <laughs> I had a subconscious new day, bro, dude. and it was pretty much, it was, like, small term, you know, summary, paraphrase, whatever you want to call it. Instincts come from what's in your DNA. Subconscious comes from what you think and what you're around, oh. product of your environment, and it kept going down. I the almost list. remembered exactly what yeah, it was. Yeah, you second know what I'm talking that, about, though. Yeah, dude, I, I saw you saying. share that, and it was so cool, man. I thought it was awesome. Like I was like, dude, that is super, super cool. You know, it's weird, man. What? I always tie this to like uh, 2012 and the sure. whole Mayan the calendar reset? and all that. But the reset, no, man, a lot of, well, okay, that's what I they say, said. A lot of people think that, dude. The, what they wanted you to believe is is the end of the earth yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Might have been, we're gonna die. But might have been a reset. What I think and what a lot of people think, Grant yeah. Hancock thinks, it was a mark of uh, a new change in our consciousness. That's to, true, bro. Uh, lev- it level that's up, true. basically. But oh, listen, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. what happened was right at 2012, the very end of that mm-hmm. is when. I had a question, and it was like, if somebody else, if somebody else came here, let's say a UFO came here, yeah. what could they tell me well, they about have. reality? What They've could they, here. what could they tell me about everyday life? And from there, dude, my mind blew up. Yeah. And I, every day, that's all I can watch is documentaries yeah, and stuff. Yeah, bro. It's, Bob Lazar, no, it's Area really good. And Flying Saucer. Shout out to Netflix, it's bro. It's so much better than watching the Kardashians. Yeah. You know oh, the Kardashians are idiots. I'm not gonna sit I here and no uh, actually, actually, no. Uh, shout out to Kim Kardashian, and I'm not gonna talk. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk heat on her because she's actually doing a lot of good stuff for the Wounded Warriors association and she's also doing a lot of great stuff for law enforcement as well right now she's donating millions so i gotta give it up although she's probably just doing it for a tax write-off if she's really not then you're legit you know like but on that one thing i gotta say about that is also the point that people try to bring up and they try to say is why the mind calendar stopped is because they were killed by the spanish conquistadors i think it's bs could be dude you could be 100 percent right but that's one theory that kind of hearsay debunks i guess that's the best way you could put it because it's hearsay and we don't know it's not proof we don't know if they really killed him at that time and they were still working on the calendar or if they had already stopped previously working on the calendar before they were killed and slaughtered and they kind of just disappeared we don't even know if they were killed by the spanish conquistadors either that's just a theory Mm -hmm. but that's one theory that uh, that's the best word i can use hearsay debunked (laughs) like that's a new word i'm going to use hearsay debunked i like that a lot but that's one perspective on it and i don't really know if i bite that i don't know 
I guess I haven't looked into it enough to really know, but I know it's something I've read, and I know it's something that other people have told me about. Just about everything that you can think of something logical that happened. True. There is there's some, going to be something. There's going to be something or somebody saying the Already, word conspiracy, right. and we've you're been right. so conditioned to hear you're that right. and say, Psh, you were right. That's you're garbage. You're right. You're right, bro. Do you heard about the whole uh, Epstein stuff? Of course. Oh, of course. Geez. Now, we're we're, we're going to save that one for an After Dark episode. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a little deep. Yeah, I, yeah. I got it. We'll get I crazy it. on that one. I but, but like, I mean. Both, we're, we're both fathers, you know what I mean? So we're That's probably going to get weird on that You're one. And we're going to get a little fired up, and our feathers are going to be ruffled. So we're going to save that one for an After Dark episode. Yeah. 100% we're going to talk about it, though. Good call. Uh, but I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. What were we talking about before that? We were talking about, uh, oh, my God, what were we just talking about? I totally uh, just forgot. We start, started we're talking, talking about, about a horrible the Mayan man. Mayan calendar, calendar 2012. Mayan calendar 2012, bro. That's so big stuff. What was the last thing we were on? We were talking about the debunking of it. Oh, the conspiracy. Okay, so here's the thing I was going to uh, point on that. So the thing is, you and I both know we're very like-minded individuals. So we're not going to bite every conspiracy as soon as it happens. And I feel like people do themselves a disservice by doing that. If you bite a conspiracy just because it's a conspiracy or just because you question everything, you're doing yourself a disservice. You need to question it. You need to look. You need to observe. But you need to wait, and you need to be patient, and you need to research. Don't always jump to the conspiracy. I feel like people who are like, oh, yeah, flat earth. Oh, yeah, gay frogs. They're inseminating these things. Like, dude, come on. So Alex Jones, much, I love dude. you, but that was wrong. Gay frogs, bro, get real. Yeah, there's a lot of that that's put out it, there it, just it, to garbage. muddy the water. It, dude. It, it's to muddy the water. That's exactly that's why I'm saying it. You got to cipher through the muddiness, even through the murkiest of waters, bro. Yeah. Quote that. The real nugs be, baby. <laughs> the real nugs be. Quote that. Write that down, son. But there's so much. If you don't want people to believe in something, you're going to yeah. condition them to yep. not believe in it. 100. percent Kind of like with the whole Democratic Party. We thought that they were going to mm-hmm. be the heroes. We thought they were were the good guys they were anti-war not true my friend they've been lying in their pockets with war since uh let's see here bill clinton he was democratic uh right he was democrat you know what i hate bill clinton i, I hate the else? i hate there there's why do you think there's two Obama. different sides why do you think there's republican and democrat well simply because one that's a good way to segregate people and divide them from the jump hey, from the jump you can divide people call. that way and that's george exactly washington right. said that the two party uh political system that we have will be the downfall of our nation Here's my next thing I'm going to talk about, and I also want to talk to uh, one of my dudes about it uh, who also has his own podcast. I'm going to give him a shout-out, Tyler Breen on uh, Facebook. Uh, his uh, He's the host of uh, the Terrible Conservative podcast. He's really dope, man. You guys got to go check him out. I'm giving him a shout-out just because I mess with him like that. Uh, but I want to talk to him about the Constitution because I have I have – a very deep feeling for the Constitution, and I think we sh- it was a great thing, and it has done us good up until about 30 years ago. Because here's my thing. Those guys who created the Constitution, they were hated. They were called socialist, communist, everything in the book, everything but a brown cow. They were called <laughs> everything, my friend, and they were hated because they wanted to change our government. They wanted to change how things were. They wanted to try something new. You don't think after... Whenever the Constitution was written, I'm not even going to do the math, but it's been hundreds of years, whatever, however long it's been. It's been a really long time. However long it's been, you don't think we should have changed it up a little bit, dude? Yeah, we needed a rule set. It's 2019, bro. But yeah. We got Wi-Fi. (laughs) The Constitution doesn't apply to Wi-Fi. What is going on? What is Wi-Fi, bro? How does it work? That'll update. What's real? I mean, rewrite. But if I say that, oh, I'm communist. Oh, I'm socialist. And I'm not talking crap about Tyler because I know he loves the Constitution. It's just something I want to speak to him about on the episode we do just to kind of get our different perspectives. You know, not even really a debate, but just kind of like a just kind of like a, you know, a peace of mind for both of us to try to look in each other's perspectives and see what we think and just kind of how, you know, different walks of life, you know. Did you watch a lot of the the news? You watch a lot of CNN and any of that stuff? I watch I watch both. I watch I watch Fox, I watch CNN, I watch uh uh, NBC Nightly News, that maybe is right. I also watch um, World News, and I and I read uh, Google News typically every day. You know what I think? I try to at least. At least a couple articles. I go through like WSAZ and CNN. I, I watch WSAZ too. Every, Local I'm, stuff. At yeah. work, that's what I'm allowed to do at work. So hey, I usually will go through and see what they're bro, you reading. But, but what I see is what a lot of the stuff they're trying to push. If you go and you look at the photos alone and you go through photo to photo, mm-hmm. what's that stuff in there? 
It's the stuff about race and gender and hate and the stuff that divides people. And the reason I think that is because when people look at that, if you're really talking about creating your own reality, yeah. you look at that and what's that going to cause? It's putting it into you. That's going to cause a, a negative emotional state. 100%. And in that a negative emotional state, you're you creating – trauma. And the collective consciousness doing yeah. that, so many people doing that, you're collectively creating a negative reality. Dude, one, like we so talked if about they, meditating. If – People knew that if they knew that their collective consciousness was mm -hmm. being controlled and they yeah. don't even know what's going yeah, on, like, if they knew that, we could literally, literally change the world. It comes back to the objectively looking at life because if you look at it objectively, you're not going to watch the news because you're not going to be waiting to see house fires in your neighborhood or – you're not going to be looking. Of your, your feelings have nothing to do Every with it. Every two seconds, a new it, shooting. It, we, not everybody dude, needs horrible, to hear man. that and it's live horrible. in fear from Straight it. Up, you know dude. what I mean? Because it's creating I mean, that. We, it's it's a it's a double it's a double edged yeah, sword because you, you need it but you don't like it puts bad stuff into you but you also need to be aware at the same time. So it's really weird. It's a it's one of those. I'll give you that. It's on the know, edge. You could fight that either you, way. Exactly. I'll give you that. But if you are you subjective enough, you're right. And the, you the subjectiveness and the objectiveness of looking at it, you're looking at it in a different perspective, and you're looking at it the way it needs to probably be looked at. All feelings, all experiences aside. There are some stories you know. that are like nobody, nobody needs to know what they just put in that story. Nobody. Yeah, that surreal. may have happened way over there in another country, yeah. but they put it in our face. That's yeah. not right. It's it's it's, it's a uh, double-edged sword. Rough. You can yeah. fight it either way, bro. But I'm going to take a second right now because my man's going to lift up uh, Thoth and or Thoth, however you want to say his name. I, and we're going to show you this real quick because uh, – Everybody out there who loves art and loves to buy art and loves to, you know, like to have awesome things in their house, sculptures, my dude can paint, he can draw. Uh, what else can you do, bro? Pretty much I, anything. Yeah. You can make stuff out of, like, random, like... Give me enough time, yeah. Literally, you can, like, I've seen so many things you've made out of, like, random stuff. These are all clay. Like, these are really awesome stuff that you sculpted. But I've seen, like, what was the one you did? It was, like, a tree. It was, like, a stump or something, maybe. Uh, yeah, I something, carved a something, elongated something, skull something out of like a that. piece of wood. Yeah. He, he can do awesome stuff like that, too. So, like, you can literally just commission him for anything you want. He charges a fee, of course, but it's a very reasonable fee, and he'll take great care of you and be very attentive with how he talks to you he'll let you know he'll give you a turnaround rate if he doesn't get the turnaround rate he's obviously going to contact you and let you know uh i don't know how you're going to work it probably half down with people you know or however it comes out you guys can talk to him about it um he's also going to have a business page up very very soon probably by the end of september so we're going to get him set up with his portfolio um but like i said this guy right here is seriously the Top two best sculptors I know personally, straight up. Again, gracias. Dude, and, of course, man. Uh, I, I do give a discount if you do, like, super cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if it's something he's into, he's yeah, going to hook you up. Let's just go ahead and be real. Definitely. Let's be clear. Same thing with my cousin, man. The one, You know, shout out to my cousin Chris. He does. He's done every single tattoo that's hit my body. All the ink that's on me, he's done. And he's the same way, bro. If you come to him with something that he likes, yeah, he's gonna hook you up, bro. And he's gonna do. He's obviously gonna do a job, a good job on every single piece. But I feel like he, it, it, it like thrills him more to do something like Captain America. Like yeah. that's his jam. That's like his favorite, one of his favorite superheroes. You know, that's just one thing I can think of. Uh, Darth Maul. You come to him for a Darth Maul tattoo, you're getting hooked up, bro. Another bow staff. Bro. Dude, for real, yeah. Shout out to the bow staff, bro. But anyways, um, so you can find him on Facebook at Wyatt Freeman. That's W-Y-A-T-T -T space F-R-E-E -E man. So free man. Um, and you can, like I said, go ahead and raise up Thoth, man. Let him see, let him see what's going on. And uh, he's also got an alien... An alien race, I guess you could say, that he created himself that is super dope too, bro. I call him the pre-Adamite. Yeah. Right, yeah, get that thing up there. Yeah, bro. So this guy's about, I don't know, he's about two foot maybe. He's got the emerald tablet. Yeah, dude. I mean, he's just, he, he's got it going on, bro. Thoth is legit. Uh, so, you know, it's about two foot, man. And this is like, you know, this is this is nice. It feels good. It's real sturdy. You know, like it's, it's awesome. It's holding man. a crystal. Yeah, it's holding a crystal. I mean, how much cooler can you get? Uh, and what's this? Uh, what's this guy again? This is uh, the alien that you created, the alien race. 
Uh, right. I call him the pre-Adamite. Study into Antarctica. You'll okay. see some of that stuff. Sweet, dude. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. So uh, you think this was like a humanoid creature? Uh, uh, yeah, turn it around. Let him see all views and stuff, you know, because, you know, I'll, I'll be posting pictures of it as well. So are you, is it like an alien race or is it like a homo sapien or like a type of, homo, uh, you know, humanoid but to get technical, Homo sapien, I guess. I don't, he I don't know would, what it would be, be like an alien uh, genetic offbreed of us, I guess. Okay, so like you're talking like talking uh, about the elongated skulls that we find all yeah, over the yeah, world. Yeah. That guy. Yeah, okay, one of him. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yeah, he's super sick, dude. And uh, like I said, Thanks. you know, the, he'll break it down for you. Customize anything you want. Super reasonable fee, and he's always down to work. So, like I said, anybody who's watching this man, you guys got to check him out. And you know. Give him a shout, dude. He will get you all the way together with any type of art thing you need. Um, also, show the turtle, too, man. Yeah, hold on. One of the coolest things that I like to do is to incorporate different things. So I've got one that is Poseidon, and I've got, like, a That's waterfall sick. behind him, I, right? Yeah, I, have you showed a picture of that on Facebook? Yet? I don't know. Um, I saw one of them. You did. This I guy, last like, one, so. I hate to admit this, but the magnetic thing that I had for him, I dropped it today, and yeah. now it's jacked up. I got to get a new <laughs> one. But this guy was meditating and like literally floating. Dude, so I'm that's gonna post, the sort I'm gonna of thing. I'm going to post the video Def. on on uh, the uh, podcast page so you guys can see. It's kind of hard to see, so I'll take a picture too, and like I'll let you guys see it like close up. Um, and I'll post it and stuff so they can see yeah. the levitating. Cause that video, the video. Yeah, the video you sent me was sick, dude, for real. Like, uh, I'll have to screen record it or whatever, but I'll figure it out and I'll get it posted, man. And, uh, you know, it was just super cool. And like I said, guys, this, this guy's awesome. He really is. He, he, he kills the sculpting game and drawing and painting and anything artsy for real. Um, it's it's if killer. You, if you got any other ideas, too, because I like to incorporate, like, lights and yeah. just moving parts and uh, electromagnetic stuff. That If you have any idea for any yeah. of that, too, def. For sure. Up. Yeah, dude. Like, that's what I'm saying. So when these people hit you up, they they're, they can custom pieces, you know. They hit you up like, oh, I want you to do this, this, and that. That's going to give you new ideas and new motivation. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just going to be great for everybody, man. Grow and grow and grow. What, what was the one? It was an alien race that I, I, you might have made up, actually. But he was, like, sitting on a throne, maybe, and he had a Oh, cane, I meant to bring that one. Staff and he had like a that one was like, uh, a, know, like an Egyptian headwear maybe it looked yeah. like with so a snake. Or that something. is one of my favorites. There's a couple I didn't Dude, bring tonight sick. that are really well. Awesome. Next time you come on, bro, which will be super soon. Yeah, you just bring new ones. You know, we'll show them off and. And you're going to have your business page up super soon. So, like, dude, yeah. we're in there like swimwear. Two of the boy. other beautiful ideas that I, I'm still in, in love with is yeah. one was a um, interdimensional astronaut. Oh, he's got the astronaut yeah, dude, suit on. Sick. And he's got this uh, thing in his hand that kind of goes upwards. Like, the gravity goes up in that that's dimension. Sick, dude. So, that's really cool. And then the other one was, like you said, it's mm-hmm. an ancient Egypt alien with a human yeah, bow into dude, it. It's really he's awesome. Killer. It's yeah. real sick. Is the astronaut clay as well? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, cool, cool. And the other guy's clay as well. The uh, the king, I guess, or god, or whatever he is, dude. He's he's sick, man. He really yeah. is. He's really awesome. Thanks, bro. Um, but yeah, and like I said, his portfolio is gonna be up soon. So you guys can check out his work. Super dope artist. Um, yeah, man, this has been a killer episode, dude. I thank you so much for coming, man. I really appreciate it, no, dude. No, dude. I had a good time. We got to do it again. It, it's been, oh, of course, man. Like Def. super soon, dude. This has been wonderful. Uh, so once again, before we wrap up, www.togetherftr.com. Check us out. Episode 36, for the record, hashtag TogetherFTR. It's the real Nugs B. Got my dude Wyatt Freeman over here. Definitely check him out. Add him on Facebook. He'll add you straight back. Hit him up for any commission pieces you want. Um, it's been a blessed day, man. Like I said, I've had a great day, man. I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. No doubt.